right, here's our first sports podcast featuring two special guests, Ben and Jacob. All right, first up, we're talking about baseball. So the Mets have a new owner, Steve Cohen. And the Mets owner, anyone have anything to say on Steve Cohen? Well, he is the richest owner. What do you guys well, think? Well, Steve Cohen I hate him. He won Francisco Lindor. He looks good. I think the Mets have a very bright future. And I think we don't because you couldn't get Trevor Bauer because he lost by two million dollars. He's terrible. He can't even get. No, him. Trevor Bauer. I don't think he wanted. Well, Ben, well, ben does make a valid point as, it's, as instead of uh, making a higher attempt to get Steve Cohen to bail uh, to get Trevor Bauer to bail out a hedge fund. We still, we still can't disregard the fact that he got a great pitcher and one of the elite shortstops in basketball. So in yeah, baseball. Like, in, in baseball, so I see the Nets having a bright. I see the Nets having a bright future. Uh, yeah, so do I, and I think with their trade, they got another pitcher in exchange for Ahmed Rosario and Andres Jimenez. So I think Andres it has Jimenez. a bright future. Also, in other baseball news, the MLB spring training is starting with, and the plan is to have a full season, full games, and more rules. And restrictions no, I, may come to follow. To be honest, I think it would be miraculous if, if they could pull off a full 162 game season. So do I, it's but. 162. Uh huh. I thought Last it was year. Only like 120. No, it's 162. That's why the Mets went like 98 and 72 I, last year or something. But I, from looking at rubrics from social media and other sites, I. Most experts say that the Mets have an 81 percent chance to make the playoffs, and I'm taking those odds any day of the week. Wait, an 81 percent chance? Wow. Well, plus the other teams in the Mets division are not too great. Well. Well, look, it's real here. The Nationals look real, look real, especially especially since with their good coach. But, but the and- Nationals last year came in last place after winning the World Series. Oh yeah, they won. Uh, against the Astros. You mean the cheaters. Yes, the cheaters. Even the, they, they, they may, I still think just, you can't really base 2020 as a real season for teams because the COVID really affected everything. Uh-huh, and a lot of players didn't play with COVID. For example, Marcus Stroman on the Mets did not play, and so did, uh, and Cespedes, Cespedes came out play. in the middle of the season. Cespedes made a personal decision not to play. He easily could have played. True. Is Cespedes going to play ever again? No. Probably no. not. He might play in the minors a little. Maybe, like, go to some teams like the Rumble Ponies, the Ducks, and then he'll fall out of the league. The Rumble Ponies. Is that, our, is that like, our, not AHL team because that's hockey. Is that, like, our minor league? Yeah, that's but the I Mets uh, farm I, system I, team. I can definitely see the Mets going places. Yeah, so can I. All right. Next up, we have basketball. What do you guys think of the Knicks and Nets uh, in New York? think is gonna what's it called win uh what's it, uh, the final game you call me five you call me not i got my nets and i don't have the lakers either i got the jazz i just feel like the jazz they're gonna be they're gonna be like the um do you guys remember ben like do you, ben, do you remember the 2015 atlanta hawks oh it's like dw12 and like uh al horford and kyle yeah Horford mm-hmm. and Jeff yeah they, they, had a, they had, like, a really solid team. So, I could see that team is similar to the Jazz. They were yeah. able to make it to the conference finals, but I think the Jazz, especially since Donovan Mitchell has become a proven playoff performer, 
I think the Jazz can beat the Lakers in seven. But since they don't have that true superstar, like the Nets have three true superstars in the finals, I think the Nets are going to beat the Jazz in six games in the, in the NBA finals. Yeah, I can see what you're saying. Yeah. Maybe. I originally had the Clip- I had the Clippers at the end of last season to win this year, but that was before, of course, they lost Montrez Harrell. And like, yeah, I, I, I don't see the Clippers going far, I have to be honest. You know, I do see the Knicks winning the first round. Though. Who do you or guys Who do you guys think is the worst team? Oh, it's the Detroit Pistons. I, you know what, here's the thing. The Detroit yeah. Pistons have won against good teams. They are, they, the Detroit Pistons have seven and wins. Five of those wins are against teams. No, we have eight. They have eight now. Oh, they have eight? So I think five, they're five and three against teams with a, with a record of above 500, which is a decent record, better than the Lakers and Clippers. Yeah, yeah that's good, but I, when, it, when, you're, when you have over 20 losses and there's only been like uh, about 30 games I think played. It, I think, you know what, I think it's the Timberwolves, because the Timberwolves have bad coaching, no defense, and Cat may be a good player, but... And D'Lo. And yeah, D'Lo did true. Cat yeah. may be a good player, but I, I, I think it's a simple All right. Pistons at least have a bright future. Right. True. All right, next up we have hockey, and Ben's going to talk ab- about the Rangers and some bit about the Islanders. All right, so uh, as a diehard Ranger fan, what I think we're going to do is I think we're going to be either close to making the playoffs at the end of the year or make it as a low seed, but if we don't, we'll get, like, Carson Lambos or Brent Clark, who I want. And we'll have like the best. We'll have the best like potential future thingy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you guys I think about the Islanders? Do you, can you guys see them making it to the final round? I see. The, I, I can see the Islanders because a team like that, they're, I think they're similar to the Nets. Not the fact that they have a bunch of superstars. That they're just an average regular season performer. That they're a great playoff performer. I, I see the Nets going to the Well, yes, yeah, so last year, didn't the Islanders make it to the semifinals, and then they lost uh, to yeah. the Lightning? Yeah, but Tampa, if they play, if they have to play Tampa in the playoffs this year, Tampa's going to sweep anyone. They're the best team in the league, and they're going to be yeah. out for a while. I, I agree. If, they, if, they, if, the, if the Islanders play Tampa, they're going down to season five. That, that's probably true. Yeah. Yeah. I see us coming close. I see us in the back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Few. But I'd still see a lottery thing, or whatever they do in hockey for drafting. Yeah, it's a lottery. All right, and finally we have football. So, starting off with the Giants, I believe that the Giants were robbed the playoff spot from the Eagles, who purposely lost the game. And the Giants uh, were really uh, inconsistent, winning against the Seahawks, losing to the Browns all over the place. I the Eagles could have easily let the Giants in. You never know. You never know, but I know. We'll never know. Yeah. So also, what about those Jets going two and fourteen this season? strongly believe that we will come I'm back this season with a better record. I do not think we're going to make the playoffs. The thing is, if the Jaguars mess up and don't if the Jaguars do not pick Trevor Lawrence for some strange reason, the Jets can get Lawrence. Yeah, but... And that's the thing. There's always bad. a possibility that the Jets, that the Jags can mess up. I agree. Yeah. I think it's gonna be a. I think I think Watson's gonna be a Viking. They're gonna they're gonna do a three team trade. They're 
gonna send Kurt. They're gonna send Kurt Cousins over to Washington. Court. Right. What were you saying? They're gonna send Kurt Cousins over to Washington, and then um, uh, and then uh, Watson's gonna go to Minnesota, and Minnesota's gonna give like a ton of picks. Yeah, I can see I that happening. I never really get the three teams trade. How like I don't get why the Pacers gave up like Oladipo in the trade, and meanwhile they got like nothing for it. Yeah. I don't understand three-way I trades. I could see, the, I could see the Jets if if they if they get a good QB like Wilson or Fields. I could see a free agent like Allen Robinson or Kenny Galladay maybe coming to New York. And I, I, uh, could, yeah. also, I could also see a good running back like maybe. You mean New Jersey? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of disturbing that the only team. Hold on, we yeah, have to include the Buffalo. Jordan. Jordan. I just got my. I'm back to my first MVP. Okay. Um, I just find it disturbing that the only team that plays in New York is the Buffalo Bills. I, I know it's because they didn't have room in New York or something, but I don't, I don't think any, I don't think anyone on Long Island is really a Bills fan unless they grew up in more like upstate New York, because the Bills are enemies of the Jets, and I don't really like the Bills. Although Josh Allen and the Bills do have some potential. I don't like Josh Allen. A lot of potential. I'm a big Stefan Diggs fan. Oh, yeah, he's pretty the good. Josh Allen and the Bills have a lot of potential. That's coming from the Dollar Jets yeah. fan. The Vikings All right. are the stupidest team to give up Stefan Diggs for a second round pick. True. Yeah, but that pick was Justin Jefferson. Justin Jackson was a beast. Maybe, but Stefan Diggs was the best work, receiver. Bro. Diggs did prove himself as a top three. Yeah, didn't he, like, lead the league in, like, he led, led the league league in, he led the league in receptions and receiving yards, which are two of the most important stats you could have as a receiver. Yep, and that's going to do it for today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed our first podcast about baseball, basketball, football, and hockey. And we'll see you next time. Adios.